Power of the Evangelist is a verse fantasy that was published by Ireland House in 2016, and it was shortlisted for the Listo Writers Week uh, Pigot Prize in 2017, with uh, Vona Grorx selected and Bernard O'Donoghue's uh, Seasons of Cullen Church. Um, it arose because I had written a poem called Yellow Woman about irresponsibility or the, the, the uh, you know, the, the justification of irresponsibility in a sense. Can we be irresponsible? So this yellow woman was being irresponsible, didn't want anything to do with politics or um, business. And uh, I imagined her as being in wild nature somehow and in dialogue with somebody who was involved with the activity of business and politics. So it was an eclogue of sorts. Um, however, shortly after writing the poem, I rediscovered Pauline's work and thought she had my yellow woman in her paintings. So I talked to her about it. She denied having a yellow woman, but in the end, um, I think she, she agreed that, that she does. So the central motif that I used as an image um, for this book was Pauline's eggshell woman slate man. And the motif is the color opposition between gray and yellow, which I interpret or saw imagistically as imprisonment versus liberation or Saturn versus Venus, those ideas. So I thought I'd write something about imprisonment and, and liberation. In the end, it, it, grew, it grew and became much bigger than I thought it was going to be. So it turned into a story, a fantasy, verse fantasy with, with, with a strong narrative. So, um, yeah, it became much longer than I thought it would be. I intended about 20 poems. It's 132 poems uh, plus 22 uh, framing prose uh, segments. So there's containment and containment and containment in it. There's probably three levels of containment. And um, the liberation con and uh, containment tend to shift. Uh, they're relative. They're not exactly um, definite concepts. So um, I'd like to do first pod. Uh, just to give a context, Agilast is the name of the city. It means, Agilast means unlaughing. The city is made of slate, it's square, and there's a consciousness within the city that it made itself and that it sustains itself and that there's nothing outside. The sky is, is conceived as just being a canopy. In the wall of the slate city, there's a shapeless, sensate piece of matter with a feminine consciousness or a female consciousness. And this is parvit, coming from the word parvitude for smallness. Parvit is terrified. She doesn't want to become form. So she has three modes. In the first one, she dreams of situations of imprisonment in the material world, which she just takes to be the world. And she's the only consciousness that accepts the external world. But this external world she's dreaming of is our world. So in the book, the, her dreams are of real situations of imprisonment, torture, pain of different, in different measures. When Parvid wakes, she lies briefly awake and is then again terrified by the manic activity of Agilas that never stops because it's mining underneath for everything. Um, and then her third mode is when she is transported in ecstasy out of the city to become the spirit of liberation in situations of imprisonment. And sometimes this uh, spirit of liberation can be a bit ridiculous, like a, a belief, Arianism, Arianism, for example, or um, a Vivian Westwood dress. And on the other end of the spectrum, this liberation can be real escape from a situation of kidnapping or, or imprisonment. So the first poem is Pod. Agilast is never mute. Parvet perched ten micro urges from ground and sandwiched in the slate is head and footed by a diligence of noise. Hammers, drills, mechanical cutters, blasts to excavate the stone. For sixteen ergons down, devices hack and slice and pull ore from dense graves. Hauled through adits up to the urban edges, the gleanings are paraded through the city like an ant army's march home. Mind focus subverts vision. Ground on top, sky passive and vacant. Products ensue. Parvet tracks the industry, 
to factories and smelting plants between the streets, then up the articulate towers to its commercial cry. She's a small, dissenting nerve in this saccadic brain, a feigning crush among the crannies of its folds, kinless in the adamant scrapings of an echoing pod, princess in the sour pulp of an inedible, imploding pea. Here's one of Parvit's dreams, and this concerns J.C. Dugard, who was abducted from a bus stop near her home at the age of 11 and kept prisoner in um, a shed in a man's backyard for 18 years, um, for a large part of that for his own um, sexual purposes. Pine. Sleep is the only escape I have. When I don't dare think, I dare to dream. J.C. Dugard. Each year in Lake Tejo, El Dorado County, CA, the kokanee salmon turn from silver blue to vermilion. They spawn and die. Their carcasses meet for mink that unabused women sport as symbols of some love. The kokanee is only native since 1944, so a mere child to the happy birthday lake, two million years old. JC's 11 were a tiny tint to that time spread, and the moment when her fingers touched the pine cone, print to Fibonacci imprint, a Netsuki eye that darkened in the small backyard shed where sleep was the better act, and a gnarled man made her desire the woody grenade, her last memory of the outside. A pine can last a thousand years, J.C. 18, held in the pulp of a small brain, twisted in, never knowing what would sprout when a forest fire melted the resin and out fell in hazardous liberation winged seeds.